welcome you here just to enjoy God's presence. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be able to make it here safe, God. We thank you for Christ in crisis. God, we thank you because you are still on the throne. God, we come to worship you today in spirit and in truth. God, we come to worship you today because you are worthy to be praised. God, we come to worship you today because you have kept us overnight, God. We thank you, God, because you are mighty. Lord, we thank you because we love you. We praise you on today, God, and ask that you will just have your way in this service through the preached word. In Jesus' name, amen. And he came to praise him this morning. Yeah. Come on, y'all know this song. Come on, help us say the presence.
exalted. Let your throne be exalted. Preparing the way. Preparing the your way. Your descent we await. Your descent we await. As we dwell in the midst of our praise. Hallowed this we place. Have hallowed this and your banner we raise. And your banner we as we raise. Cast down as our crowns we cast and cry holy. Down our crowns and cry holy. By your stripes. By we your stripes we are and your blood does reveal. Your blood does reveal the entrance to glory. The entrance of the holy of holy. Of holy. Greatest refrain. In my greatest refrain. When they called out when my name. Called out my I'll sing the lesson. I'll sing the sweet and honor. I made it over. I made it over. Praise, praise, praise to the ancient of days. With our hands lifted up, we cry.
worship you in this temple. And I crown your majesty. For you are great, Jehovah, Jehovah. You are priest over me. You are the song I sing. You are the song I sing. You are That's who you are. That's who you are. You are the song I sing. You are the song I sing. You are the air I breathe. You are the air I breathe. You are my everything. You are my everything. That's who you are. That's who you are. I worship you. You are the air I breathe. 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 
that you have a plan, Lord God. We just thank you today. We bless you today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. feel comfortable today? Yes. Amen. You feel empowered and enabled by the Spirit of God today? Yes. We're going to have church today. Amen. Yes. We thank God for our musicians and for our praise team. They have led us to the throne. Amen. Yes. We thank God for them. Amen. Yes. yes. Also want to just give a shout out to our ushers uh, and our greeters, and all of them who are designed here to keep us safe. Amen. Yes. Amen. And then last but not least to our tech, technology crew in the booth and setting everything up for us. Shout out to them. They've done a fantastic job, amen. Through all of this stuff and these dangers and all of this, man, they, they have been faithful and they have helped us continue to do what God has called us to do as a church, amen. And then finally, to my Grace Bible Church family, amen. You guys are looking good, it's good to see you. It is wonderful to be in the house with you. I wish we could just hug, but we got to have virtual hugs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, I'm going to get on into the message this morning. A quick funny story, uh, so y'all don't be too, too mad about the word today. Uh, just a quick funny story. Well, let me let you know. I'll, let me just pause. This is part two of last week's message. Amen. Uh, so a funny story to lighten the mood, all right. Uh, there was a religious lady that had to do a lot of traveling for her business, so she did a lot of flying. Flying made her very, very nervous, and so she always uh, took her Bible with her uh, on the flight because reading it helped her relax on the flights. So this one time she was sitting next to a man, and 
he saw her pull out her Bible and he gave a little chuckle. <laughs> he said, uh, he turned around and said to her, uh, you, you don't really believe all of that stuff in there, do you? And the lady said, of course I do. Amen. It's the Bible. And he said, well, what about that guy that got swallowed by the whale? She said, yeah, that was Jonah. Yeah, I believe it, because it's in the Bible. And he said, okay, well, uh, how do you suppose he survived all that time in the whale? And the lady said, I, I really don't know. I guess when I get to heaven, I'll have to ask him. And the guy said, well, well if he, what if he isn't in heaven? And she said, well, then you can ask him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. All right. I hope we lighten up the mood just a little bit. Amen. Well, this morning, we're going to go back to Ephesians, uh, the, the, the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. We're going to go back to that, to the sixth chapter of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter six. And we will do a bit of a review. And then after the review, we will jump right on into the meat of what we came to discuss this morning. And it's just that it's a discussion. Um, and after we read a little bit of this text, I'm not going to read all of it just yet. I'm just going to read the review part, uh, and then we'll read the rest. Um, so you don't have to stand if you don't if you don't want to stand this morning. Now you can. Now if you got flexibility, you want to exercise and you want to get moving around just a bit, you can get on up. And we're going to read uh, Ephesians chapter six. We're going to start at verse number ten. It says, "Finally, or final word: Be strong in the Lord." and in the power of his might, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against rulers, evil rulers, and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece or the whole armor of God so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Amen. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Amen. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. You may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to review just this piece of it uh, for about 10 minutes. And then after our review, we're going to jump on into the rest uh, of this text. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, I did get a lot of feedback uh, from last week's message. And while I appreciate that, I thank God for that. Uh, some of it was a little disconcerting, uh, I, but, but you know, the, the, when, you, when you preach the Word of God and you preach it from your heart, uh, everybody's not going to like what you say. Amen. 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 And, and I get that and I understand that. Uh, uh, but one of the things I did want to do is I wanted to clarify, uh, because there were some things people may have heard me say that I was not intending to say. Amen. Uh, I was not intending to say, especially to my seniors, uh, and to those who have health conditions, I was not intending to say to you that you should be out and about. Amen, somebody. Y'all need to talk to me in here. I was not saying to my seniors and to those with health conditions that you should be running these streets because you should not be. Amen. You should be at home in the safety of your house. Amen. And I want you to go back and read that letter that I wrote to the church. Uh, if you have a health condition, if you are uh, older, if any of those things, if you're that, I would much rather you to continue to enjoy the live stream. Amen? Because then I'll know you're safe. Uh, my, my message primarily about getting out of the house was for those who are already out the house. Amen. Th those who are doing what they want to do when they want to do it. And then on Sunday morning, they figure, you know, I need a day of rest. Amen. I'll stay at Bedside Baptist. Amen. I'll listen to Reverend Pillowway this morning, right? My, my message was primarily to them. Your family needs you to be with us if you're going to be out and about. But primarily here, you must stay safe. Amen. Let, let me throw this out at you. I won't, I won't take too long saying it. God called me to be a pastor. He called me to preach. He called me to be a minister. I didn't pick it. Amen. Amen. I didn't go through the list of vocations and say, yeah, you know what? I think I'll do that one. No. God called me to this. And because he called me to this, he equipped me to do this. 
Well, yeah, Pastor, did you go to seminary? Yeah, after the fact, I did go to seminary because I thought it would help me. But the truth of the matter, what helped me to be able to pastor is what God has put in me. Amen. God has put in me a heart for his people. And not just those people who smile at me. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. God has put inside of me a heart for his people because he knows I'm not accountable to them. I'm accountable to him. Somebody ought to say hallelujah in here. I'm feeling a little loose, Pastor Jay. Because, because God knows what his people need. There's no way Pastor Ross could go through his book of tricks and decide, you know what, they need this today. No. I don't have the capacity to do that. But God in his infinite mercy and his wisdom and you in your wonderful and kindness allow me the ability to get in that study and hear the voice of the Lord. And when I hear the voice of the Lord, it's not about what Ulysses wants. It's about what he wants. Amen. 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 So I want you to know my heart. My heart is his heart. And that is to feed you. He asked Peter these questions. He said, Peter, do you love me? He just said, well, of course I love you, Lord. And he said, well, then feed my sheep. No, Peter, you didn't get it. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you, you know I love you. I cut the dude ear off for you, you know. But if Peter feed my sheep, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my lambs, Peter. What was God saying? God was saying, you have a responsibility that I put on you that you can't escape. <laughs> so I want you to know that from a heart, and I know you all haven't gotten a chance to really get to know me, uh, but believe me, just like I shouted out my phone number, my office, my doors are open. I want to get to know you. But even before you get to know me, know that I love the Lord with all of my heart. And because I love him, there is no way that I would put you in danger. There is no way that I would knowingly do anything to hurt you. Why? Because my responsibility is to God. Amen? Amen. All right, we can move, we can move on. Y'all calm down. So, 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 so. So last week we talked about some of the myriad of problems that were plaguing our community. We gave some statistics. We talked about some things that were in dire straits. And as you can see by turning on your television, that people are hurting. Amen? Amen. Not only that, people are angry and people are tired. And I expressed to you several weeks ago because I, I'm, I am a black man living in America. Amen? And I happen to be six foot one, over 200 pounds. Amen. And so, yeah, yeah, the enemy is after me. And the enemy wants to pull me down. And the enemy wants to destroy me. And he uses a myriad of ways to do it. And so it makes me think that my, my fight is with people. It makes me think that my fight is with political systems or, or, or with even the, 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 the law enforcement systems. It, it makes me think that that's where my fight is. But one thing that I know and I understand that if my fight is just there, yep. then somebody smarter than I can enact a law or some sort of legislation to change it, and then everything is going to be all right. But the last time I checked, I studied a little bit of history. They've been trying to do that for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it still hasn't worked. So I have to remind you as well as I remind myself that we are not going to fix our social problems with more social solutions. I am reminded that this battle is much deeper and much more diabolical than just somebody choosing one moment of time to say, let's get these people who we don't like their shade and keep them over here and keep them oppressed. No, that diabolical madness goes back further than that. It goes all the way back to Satan himself. And so in that vein... We really wanted to talk about what's going on today. Marvin Gaye had a song back in the day that said, what's going on? And when I listened to that song, I heard all of the issues and the social ills that he talked about going on. And this was a long time ago. Some of my younger people never even heard of Marvin Gaye, right? But then I listened to that song and I hear that song and I say to myself, man, that same stuff is still going on. 
what is going to change the trajectory that we are on here in this world? Is it going to be a war? <laughs> Is it going to be legislation? Is it going to be a new leader? Do we, are we looking for the reincarnation of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? What are we looking for? Because as long as we're looking to man, we will only get answers that are limited by the ability of man to reason and to think. Brothers and sisters, we must look beyond man and recognize that there is a creator and a sustainer of the entire universe. There is one who has knowledge that is deeper than any ocean. There is one who is, has knowledge that is higher than any mountain. He is the creator, God Almighty. He has the answers. Yeah. And I do apologize this morning. I'm a little, a little worn down, just a little tired and coaching football. And you know how it is with the first week of camp, man, it's rough, amen. And so a little bit of my defenses are down. I've lost my voice a little bit. Uh, but the Spirit of God reassured me that I would be able to deliver this message uh, that I have for you all today. And this message is that we are not called to enter into spiritual warfare. The Apostle Paul is not making a call for us to go into spiritual warfare. He is simply making an announcement that whether you know it or not, you're already engaged in spiritual warfare. So whether or not you choose to believe it or not, you are in the battle and you are on the battlefield. You can put your head in the sand and pretend like nothing's going on, but you are, my brothers and my sisters, engaged in a spiritual battle that does not just have temporal implications, but it has eternal implications. This battle is not being waged just on the physical realm of the things that we can see, but this battle is being raised in the spiritual realm, in places that we cannot easily see with our physical Amen. eye. But you who are believers in Christ Jesus, you who have been made alive in the spirit by God himself can see these things. Amen. But you must open your spiritual eyes so Amen. that you can see. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so this morning, last week, last week, let me finish. I mean, last week we talked about the spiritual warfare. Uh, we talked about the context of this letter. Uh, the Roman Emperor Nero was wreaking havoc on all of the land. And we talked about Paul uh, himself being locked up and on house arrest and in jail, writing these letters to encourage the church at Ephesus. And so in this encouragement, he's also encouraging us by a few basic truths. I want to go through these so that you can get them and get them real good. And the first basic truth, and I know you can go back and look at this, but if you're writing, you can take these notes down. The first First truth is that there is an invisible world that is just as real as the visible world. Amen. There is an invisible world that is just as real as the visible world. Amen. That's why Paul says we're not fighting against people. Now, I know that's a difficult concept to understand for people, especially if you haven't really done a whole lot of studying about the invisible realm. But in this invisible realm, there are powers that are fighting to set you up for failure. There are powers that are fighting that are designed to destroy you. And it's not just you of a particular melanin content in your skin, Elmo. It is every human being on this planet. The enemy could care less the content of melanin that you had. He wants to destroy everybody that calls upon the name of the Lord. Please know this and understand this. The second thing you must see and understand is that we all are involved and engaged in this invisible war. <laughs> whether we know it or not, whether we know it or not. <clears throat> see, just really highlight, highlight, I know my, I got to go fast, I got a lot of stuff today. Highlight is something happens to you and you don't know why it happened. Oh yeah, something happens in your family line and you don't understand why it happened. And you keep asking, so well, what, is, what did I do to cause that to happen? Or what did such a so-and-so do to cause that to happen? And you can't figure it out because you don't know. See, because the issue is this is beyond what you can think or see. The enemy is waging war against you and your family. You might have prayed too loud last night. I don't know what it is. But you need to know that the enemy is coming after you. And when you don't know, he catches you unaware. You're like, man, why me, God? Well, the real answer is why not you? Oh, help me hear Jesus. You must know that you're involved in a war. That's why I tell people when you get saved, don't think all your problems are going to stop. 
Somebody ought to pray for me here today. <laughs> when you come to give your life to the Lord and you say, Jesus, hey, I surrender to you, don't think that means all of my issues is over with. Woo, child, I'm about to walk nice and free and clear. My debts is kids. No, 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 no. You just been taken off the other side of the battle and been placed on the winning side. That's all. But there's still a battle going on. Hello. And as a matter of fact, now the enemy had put a target on you because now you a traitor. You just stepped on the other side. He's like, man, we're going to kill that traitor. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you this to be afraid. I'm telling you this to be aware. Hello? Because when you're aware, you can recognize who you are and who you are and stop fraternizing with the enemy all the time. Hello, somebody? Yeah. Fraternizing with the enemy who's trying to kill you. you sitting up at the bar kicking it with the people that want to kill you. No, you need to get off the enemy's side and get on God's side because on God's side, there is protection. Hello, somebody. You're not fighting on the losing side no more. You're on the winning side. You need to open up your eyes and your mouth and act like you're a winner and not a loser. Start acting like a victor and not a victim. Because I am a child of the Most High God. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in this place today. Third thing is you got to recognize that your enemy is formidable. <laughs> you're not dealing with no punks. <laughs> <laughs> See, sometimes, sometimes church folk are misguided and they go around spouting off things that they know nothing about. Amen. The devil's under my feet, child. I'm going to walk all over him today. Woo. You talk all this stuff as long as everything is good, right? Child, the devil showed up and I'm knocking the devil out. I'm, the, I'm casting the devil out. I'm cast. And as soon as you get a hiccup, whoo, oh. As soon as you get a scratch, you do <laughs> Oh, Lord, Jesus, call the saint. Somebody pray for me. I thought the devil was under your feet. <laughs> see, see, you must understand that this enemy that we're dealing with is not just some uh, bully around the block. <laughs> this enemy we're dealing with is an arch enemy of our father. Hear me now. Who was in heaven. He was an angel. As a matter of fact, he was a powerful angel. And it took other angels in heaven to kick him out. You read three scriptures a month, you think you're going to fight him and be dead? You must understand and know that this enemy that is formidable is out to kill you and discredit your father. Brothers and sisters, it's not time to take him lightly. It's not time to sit around uh, and, and mock the animal, the enemy. The Bible says that he's going around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. This, this is not time to sit on our hands. This is time for us to get up and continue to wage war against this enemy. Amen. So we must respect this enemy, not fear him. We must respect him. And how do we respect him? We respect him by doing our due diligence. Amen, somebody. Let me say that again, because I know people might have got confused. I know I have a tendency sometimes, I got all of the notes up here, uh, and sometimes we get confused. Uh, we don't respect the enemy by giving any credence to what he does. We respect the enemy by recognizing that he is a formidable foe. Amen. And because he is a formidable foe, we don't mock the fact that he's defeated. We stand on the fact that he is defeated. Amen? <laughs> yeah. Because the true enemy that you really got to fight is the enemy enemy. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the enemy that's down inside of you that's causing you to veer off to the right. Amen. That, that enemy that's causing you to lie on your taxes. Amen, somebody. That enemy that's causing you to cheat on your spouse, whether you physically did it or whether you up on the internet at night. Hello, come on now. That's the enemy enemy. The enemy that want to cuss people out if they cut me off in traffic. Hello, somebody. That enemy that causes me to take all the staples and the paper clips and the staplers from the work job. Amen, come on now. That enemy that's got me at the boat thinking I'm gonna hit the jackpot so that I can make it and I don't have to go to work no more because I'm tired of working. Amen. Where my college students at, that inner, inner, enemy, enemy that's causing me to get the notes before the test 
and read the test. Amen. Amen. So that I don't have to study too hard. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. We must understand that this formidable enemy is attacking us and this enemy is trying to tear us down and discredit our Savior. We got to stand our ground and fight against him with the spirit of truth. Amen, somebody. I got to move on. I got to move on. Here's a couple of things uh, that'll help you. I got about 20 more minutes that'll help you recognize, recognize this enemy. These are some ways that'll help you see his schemes. The first thing is his name reveals his tactics. His name reveals his tactics. The word Satan is an adversary. The word devil means slanderer. That word diabolical means one who is full of tricks. Lucifer, son of the morning, Beelzebub, the prince of demons, the evil one, the tempter, the prince of this world, the accuser of the brethren, the serpent, the dragon, an angel of light. This shows you the tactics that the devil are up to when you're fighting him. Oh, no, he's not the red suit wearing dude with the horns and the pitchfork. Amen. <laughs> I know some of us think that that's the devil. We can recognize him when we see him. He got on a red suit and a tail and a pitchfork and some horns. He's scary, right? <laughs> see, 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 even, even our, our, our shows and our media and our literature has us to belittle and poke fun of this devil. As a matter of fact, we've gotten so smart and so intelligent now, we just to tell other people there's really no such thing as a devil. There's no devil. There's no, there's no devil. Oh, yes, there is. And the Bible says that there is. Amen? And you better recognize there is. And the second thing is you want, you want to know about the devil? He, he, he always is attacking God's program. Amen. Who is God's program? The church. He's always attacking God's program. Look at him now. He's just running rampant all through our, our media, right? He's attacking the church. Don't go to church, y'all. Ooh, church is dangerous. Don't go to church, y'all. Yeah. But you got to go to those essential places. I know, I know you got to go to those essential places. Amen. But don't go to church. <laughs> That's not essential. But yeah, so we're going to try to open baseball back up. I mean, come on now, and football. But don't go to church. Amen. But what is that? Oh, Pastor C, there you go again. You're just trying to trick the people to come to church. No, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, no way. I care about these people. And even if you can't physically come here, you better go somewhere and get on your knees and fall on your face. Amen, somebody. Amen. Satan is attacking the church. And not just that. Look at what he's doing. He's dividing us. He got some in this side of the church and some in this side of the church, and we fighting, and we fighting each other based on some pettiness that some people then invented who filled with the devil. Yeah. They, they have invented some divisiveness in the body of Christ. Well, Pastor, what you, what, you, what you mean? Look, you know what? They, they've got false doctrine, <laughs> false morals, False religion, false philosophies, false ministers, false disciples. They, they even got false church. Amen, somebody. You have whole, you have whole congregations believing, believing in the hope that if we just get the right Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court, if we just get the right person in the White House and the right person in the Senate and the right people in the Congress, we're going to eliminate abortion. I know that's right. Amen. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're not going to eliminate abortion by putting devils in office? Make it plain. Oh, see, that, see that, now they mad at me. They're going to be calling me this week. Pastor, you said devils. Yeah, because when you're moved and, 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 and operating in the spirit of Satan, guess what you need to be called? The devil. That's why Jesus said it to me. He said, no, no, uh -uh, get behind me, Satan. No, no. Because when you're being motivated and used like a puppet by the devil, Brothers and sisters, you can't go and, and, and pass a law and think everybody going to act like Jesus. You only act like Jesus if Jesus is inside of you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
you know what? Let me move on because I can feel some tension right there. Amen. This is how Satan attacks God's program, the church, by sending all this false stuff. This is why the church is all divided because of all this false doctrine. Oh, you got to believe this. You got to worship on this day. You got to worship on that day. You can't eat this. Can't eat that. Oh, you better stop eating that shellfish. Oh, you better do this. You better do that. And all of this foolishness to keep us preoccupied and distracted and fighting amongst ourselves. Wonder what would happen if the church decides, you know what we really need is to get on our knees and come together and cry out to God because he is our source of strength. <laughs> Satan attacks God's people by directing governments, by deceiving men, by persecuting the saints. He promotes division in the body of Christ. Amen. Look at the divisions that he's promoting in the body of Christ along racial lines, black and white. He's promoting division. Among gender lines, he's promoting division. Y'all didn't even say amen to that, right? Oh, yeah, he, he's really destroying the church among gender lines, especially today, because today the media says, oh, look, you, you got to have a woman running stuff, because a woman running stuff, we won't have all these wars no more. Yo, it's quiet. Yeah, because if a woman's running stuff, we don't have all of these distractions. Everyone might be out playing golf all the time, worrying about some NASCAR. We be getting the job done. And the media throws at us, and the men are like, well, I want to say something different, but if I say something different, they're going to accuse me of being a male chauvinist. And so now in the church, Satan is dividing the church, because now he says, hey, well, look, sisters, you need to be, you need to be preaching, you need to be teaching, you need to be running the church, and brothers, you need to let them do it. And look around, brothers, it ain't enough for y'all to do nothing, no way. You might as well let the women leave. And Satan then got in the church and divided the church. No, he don't sound like Satan. He sound like the relevant media people. But it ain't nothing but the devil causing distractions trying to divide us. All you really got to do is go back to Genesis and see God has a plan for all of this. The problem is we don't like to read God's plan because it sounds too right. Amen, somebody. God said he created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Look, look, you know what? I'm about to get in trouble again. I, I know it. All I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, is that God has a plan for his people. We need to go back and look at it and read it and adhere to it and stop listening to the devil. Because yet the devil sound good. He sounded good in the garden. Yo, Sister Eve. Yo, Sister Girl. Yo, yo, yo. Let me holler at you, Sister Eve. Check what I got out over here. It's some good fruit, girl. No, God said don't eat. Girl, you know God tripping with you. God just don't want you to have everything he got. He really, don't, don't tell nobody, but he really scared of you being and knowing what he know. You could be just like him if you eat this. For real. See? And, and that's the, nothing but the enemy. She go tell her husband, uh, uh, Adam. Remember what you were saying last time about how you really wish you could be more like God? Y'all. This fruit right here, this can make you just like God. Won't he be so proud of us? Well, God said don't eat that. Look, I already ate it. Look at me. I'm cool. He said, okay. Right? I mean, and, and so what happens is now we didn't listen to the smooth, slick tossing sound of the enemy, and we didn't got ourselves in bed with the enemy. Now we got to get out the garden, and instead of just having lunch, now we got to go and plow the fields and stand out in the hot sun and pick the cotton and do all of the stuff that we didn't have to do until we listened to the diabolical one. Brothers and sisters, that's what he's doing right now today. And I wish I had more time because I spent more time on it. But don't you know, first of all, for you, you must understand that as believers in Christ, we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory. You don't have to try to be like God. God is in you, those who have been called and born again. You don't have to strive to be like Jesus. Don't you know he's put everything that you need inside of you? All you got to do is stand up and live according to what his word says. to we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. Amen. Amen. So with the proper response to the fact that we are in spiritual warfare is to put on the whole armor of God. 
Paul says, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Stand with what, Pastor Ross? With the armor of God. Let's look at it. I'm going to read it because I really only got about 10 more minutes. Let's, let, let's read it. Uh, it says here, he says, Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you may be able to resist the enemy in a time of evil. Then after the battle, watch this, then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. The key thing that you must hear and see here, that there is a battle. There's a multiple battles. And battles are going to continue to come to you whether you want them or not. <laughs> the, the Apostle Paul is saying here, you, you need to put your armor on and be ready for the devil when he comes. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? He's coming. I know you can't bump your neighbor, but just look at your neighbor and tell me, he, he's coming. He says, so, so put on every piece of God's armor so that when he comes, you'll be able to resist him. And then after that battle, you'll still be standing firm. Man, that makes me excited. <laughs> because if I'm still standing firm, that means he done ran off and I won. Oh, help me here, Jesus. Let's look what he says. Look at this army. He says, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Putting on the belt of truth. Just look at your other neighbor and say, the belt of truth. The first armor we see here is the belt of truth. Some, some translations say the girdle of truth. I'm a football player, football coach, we put on girdles. And in that girdle, it contains some pads. And the old football players in here say amen, right? Amen. Right? It has some hip pads, it has some th thigh pads, it has some, some, some backside pads, right? Amen. And in those pads, they are fitted down in this tight fitting girdle. And this girdle is designed for when attacks come at you on the back, attacks come at you on the side, there is some padding there to keep you protected in areas that could be damaged. Amen, somebody? Amen. Just have your waist girded with truth. What is truth? Truth is the foundation on which everything else is built. Hear me when I say the truth is the foundation on which everything else is built. If you don't know what is true, you won't know what is a lie. Amen. If you don't know what is true, you will never be able to resist the devil, which is why the devil is attacking fundamental truth today. Oh, help me, Jesus. You know what, man? I just, for the spirit of the Lord is on me. I'm sorry. Today we have this new kind of truth. This new kind of truth is a, is a relative truth. Amen. This, this is a postmodern truth which says, my truth may not necessarily be your truth, so leave me alone and don't judge me on my truth because that's my truth. Yeah. That's a dangerous truth because that's not really true. This relative truth says you can manipulate it and change it based on your situation, based on your opinion. Brothers and sisters, that's not true. You don't find truth in a law book. You don't find truth in a history book. You find truth in the Bible. Amen. And that alone, amen. <laughs> when the Bible talks about truth, that's what he's talking about, truth. And the, he says you must wear it like a belt, which means you need to have it on at all times. Truth. What is truth, Pastor? Truth is the fact that when you uh, read the scriptures and God says something about a thing, you can't change it no matter whether you try to change it. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that God be true and everybody else a liar. Well, the truth of the matter, Pastor, is we, we are having issues and problems out here and people are hurting us and destroying us. No, that's your reality. That's not truth. Ah, <laughs> uh, help me hear Jesus. See, 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 reality is uh, sometimes it's hard for me to pay my bills. Sometimes it's difficult for me to have everything that I need. That's reality. But the truth of the matter is my God shall supply all of my needs. See, see, you know what, man? I, I need to calm down because I feel the spirit in here. See, see, the problem is we're so used to seeing reality that we have forgotten about what truth looks like. 
We watch reality shows. We go to reality series. We have reality stuff. We are reality musicians, reality rappers. I say, man, why are you talking about that terrible, horrible stuff? This is my reality. I said, well, then you need to rise above your reality and start reading the scripture and start seeing what God says about you. Because I don't care what you say about me. I'm going to say we believe what God says about me. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. You know what? Let me say this last thing, and I've got to move on to my next point. This is going to help somebody. It might not help nobody in here, because I think y'all, you know, y'all know who y'all are. But, 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 but hear, me, hear me when I tell you. Just because people tell you that you're oppressed, you don't have to accept that. Amen. Just because people tell you uh, that you're a woman, and you've got to work 17,000.5 times harder than a man to make it, you, you don't have to accept that. Just come by somebody say, you, you know what? You, you're a black man in America. You ain't going to make it. They're going to keep you down. They're going to hold you down. They, I said, they can try all they want to try. But my daddy is God. <laughs> they can say whatever they want to say about you. Listen, but listen, I am filled with the spirit of God. God is the one who promotes me. If I humble myself before him, he promised me in his word that he would exalt me. You can't keep me down when God got me on the rise. Hello? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm not telling you not to recognize that things are bad. Because if I'm out in a rainstorm, I'm not going to tell you there ain't no rain coming. Rain is coming. But Sister Mary Ann said the same thing. As long as I'm standing under an umbrella, I'm not going to get wet. The rain going to keep coming. But I'm going to tell you this truth. I'm going to stand up under the umbrella. Amen, somebody? Yeah, we're living in a sinful and difficult time, brothers and sisters, here in America. But I don't know about you. I'm standing up under the umbrella of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Let it rain. It don't make no difference if it rain. I am a child of the Most High God. And that settles it. Amen. We need to take the same mentality. Yeah, the enemy is busy, but my God has already beat him a long time ago. Amen. So stop always saying what you see and start talking about what you know. Amen. Amen. That is the belt of truth. The belt of truth. The next thing we got to put on is the breastplate of righteousness. This piece of armor, back in the day, it was made to cover the chest. It was also made to cover the back and the sides as well. Front and back, it was... Uh, the covering, it was the breastplate. It, it covered those vital organs that you need to live. The heart, and the liver, and the pancreas, and the lungs. It covered those things so that you could stay alive in the battle. Here we see uh, righteousness. What is righteousness? Well, brothers and sisters, one thing that I know is not righteousness. I am not righteous. Amen. I'm going to qualify because I don't, you know, I got theologians in here. I, I just want you to know what I'm saying. I, Ulysses is not righteous. Ulysses is jacked up. Amen. Let, 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 I'm telling the truth for shame of the devil. Ulysses, you get Ulysses in a corner somewhere and you start talking some stuff, Ulysses might straight up hurt you. There's no need to mean lying to you. He might. Ulysses can be jacked up. But one thing that I know for certain is that when I put on the breastplate of righteousness, that is something that I don't have in my hands. It is something that wraps around me, and now I'm in his hands. See, 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 ain't gonna talk. So, so when I tell you that I am made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it ain't nothing I did. Amen, somebody. But it's something that he did. He got me wrapped up, tied up, and tangled all up in him. And even if I want to get off this armor, I can't get it off because the breastplate is just that. It don't never come off. You sleep in it. You bathe in it. You shower in it. You get up in it. Why? Because the righteousness of God is the Holy Spirit in me, and he has justified me by faith. Oh, I feel like shouting this morning. That is the righteousness of God. Amen. So when people call you a low life, just smile and say, in him. <laughs> people say that you're a liar and a devil and a thief, and you just, just shake your head and say, mm -mm, in him. Amen, Amen somebody. <laughs> when folks look at you and say, you ain't going to never make it, you ain't going to do this, and you ain't going to, your daddy wasn't nothing, your mama wasn't nothing, you, you ain't did 
nothing. You just look at them and just say, ooh, child, I don't know about you, but I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus. Even if I tried to escape, I couldn't. He's holding me in the hollow of his hand, and he's never letting me go. Even if you try to snatch me out of his hand, you can't because I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in this place. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. His righteousness is on me. His banner is over me. I'm a child of the Most High God, Pastor Jackson. And no matter how I say it, and no matter what I do, I can't escape his blessings because his blessings and his mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. My, my God. Let me calm down so I can get out of here. The next thing that we must have is shoes shod with the preparation of the gospel. And it is the gospel of peace. The beautiful thing about the gospel is the gospel erases hostilities. I got any Bible readers in here. The gospel erases hostilities. See, when I come and you see my feet, and I look like a soldier, you're going to prepare for battle. Come on. But when I come with my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, yeah. when you see my feet, you don't have to worry anymore because you know I'm coming in peace. Yeah. And so what happens when we come to the throne of grace, Brother Richard, <laughs> we don't see, uh, look like God's enemies anymore because we're coming with the gospel of peace on our feet. So when you look up under the curtain and you see the gospel of peace on my feet, you open up the curtain and welcome me in. Why? Because the gospel is all over me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there's many places that you can go that you choose not to go, but you can go if you have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And God will open up doors for you, for you to go in and tell somebody about Jesus. But you got to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. You know what? I got to go. I got to go. Roman soldiers, Roman soldiers, when they used to strap on their sandals, their sandals was like football players. They had cleats up under them. And those cleats would help them during the time of battle. And so when they out there fighting, instead of running and slipping and slap, boom, you know, they got cleats on. And they were able to dig those cleats in the ground, put up their shields, and fight without being moved because of those cleats. Well, the gospel is your cleats. <laughs> Come on, Satan. Come on, Satan. Satan. See, the devil got you on a slippery slope. Some of y'all are slipping and sliding. Sometimes up. Sometimes down. <laughs> no, you need to put the gospel on so you can have some cleats. And those cleats will dig in. And when you get the cleats dug in, you're not going anywhere. Because the good news of the gospel says, yeah, I was jacked up, but Jesus paid it all. <laughs> the good news of the gospel says my sins are many and like scarlet, but Jesus washed them white as snow. <laughs> the good news of the gospel is I came in a wreck sitting on death row about to be condemned. But the good news of the gospel says that Jesus came in. He bore my sins and his sicknesses on the shameful cross of Calvary. And by his stripes, I am healed. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, I'm healed. I'm healed today in the name of Jesus. Look at your other neighbor. I'm healed today by the blood of Jesus. I'm healed, delivered, and set free. Hallelujah. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He says the shield of faith. <laughs> notice, notice, notice in some translations, Apostle Paul says, above all, <laughs> take the shield of faith. Well, you know, I'll be curious, man, when I read stuff, and I'm like, why would he say above all? Surely, I would have thought that he would have said that about the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Surely he would have said above all, Above all, take the sword. But Apostle Paul says, above all, take the shield of faith so that you can quench 
all the fiery darts. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this shield that the Romans used to have was a big, large shield. And they'd get together with the other warriors and they put their shields together. And this shield would create almost like a force field that they'd be shooting arrows and shooting all kind of stuff and it'd just be bouncing off. And as a matter of fact, what they would do is they would cause their enemy in many times to run out of ammunition <laughs> and be tired of shooting all of these darts that they didn't even really have to do a whole lot of fighting because their enemy was tired out. And I thought about Muhammad Ali. Now, some of y'all might know him. Some might, some might know him as Cassius Clay, right? But Muhammad Ali did this thing that would tire out his opponent. Some of y'all know what it is. It's called a what? It's called a rope dope Now, it sounds crazy, but, but Ali would go and lean up against the ropes and put up his shield. Yeah, I got to talk. And the enemy just be coming, boom, boom. Especially for Joe Frazier, just coming, boom, 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 boom. Throwing all kind of body blows. He just, <clears throat> and before you know it, before that round is over, Joe Frazier like, <sighs> can barely throw. And Ali just come in, tip, tip, toe, tip, whick, 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 knock him down, right? <laughs> Ain't even expended a lot of energy, still feeling good. Why? Because he used his shield. Amen. That's why Paul's saying, above all, get the shield of faith. Because the devil's going to shoot a shot. But as long as it's bouncing off the shield of faith, it can't hurt you. So let them shoot. Let them fire away. As a matter of fact, say, keep on firing, devil. You just let it bounce off the shield, right? Well, Pastor, what is the shield of faith? I'm so glad you asked. The faith, the shield of faith is one where the Christians, they know they put their faith and their trust in him because when their faith and their trust is in him, they already know that they're going to win the war. Amen. You know what I remember? I remember trying to... Uh, uh, trick my children for Christmas, and I told them one Christmas that we ain't have no money. Uh, what's Sister Ross? Said? She, she ain't. I, I told him we didn't have no money. He said, "Daddy, Mama, we had a rough year, so Christmas this year gonna be kind of scarce, right?" <laughs> he was like, "Well, how scarce? You know how kids they they get nervous when you start messing around with Christmas. They don't like that. How scarce is Christmas gonna be, Daddy?" I said, "Well, Christmas gonna be a little a little scarce, and so." Uh, don't, don't, don't get too upset if you don't get everything that you want, right? right? And, so, and, so, and so we went on not, not thinking about it, but one day I overheard some of the older children talking to the younger children. And, and the younger children say, man, we're not going to get nothing for Christmas this year. It's, it's going to be scarce. And I heard the older children say, don't worry about that. Mom and Daddy always get us some nice stuff for Christmas. <laughs> don't even worry about that, right? Believe me, we, we 13, we 14, we 15, whatever, they always going to get you something nice. So go ahead on and rest yourself. Stop worrying about all that. You're going to get something nice for Christmas, right? And so I was taken aback. I'm like, huh? who they think, who you think you, you don't go tell them that, right? But guess what? They had developed enough faith in mama and daddy to know even if we said times was tight, they already knew some, some good stuff coming, man, because we can put our trust in mama and daddy. Mama and daddy know Christmas come, they always going to have us smiling. And sure enough, Christmas came, and we got them some, and, 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 the, and the kids was looking, they was like, I thought y'all said Christmas was going to be scarce this year. I said, well, it is. They was like, okay, we can have scarce Christmas every year, right? Because <laughs> here's the deal, brothers and sisters, they put their faith and their trust in mama and daddy. And let me tell you something, man, about my daddy. I got faith and trust in my daddy. And if he tell me to put up a shield, even though I see everything coming, I see COVID-19 coming. He say, put your shield up. I put it up. I see economic disaster coming. He say, oh, don't worry about that. Put your shield up. I put my shield up. I see uh, 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 unrest in the streets and, and rioting and, and hatred and sadness and all that stuff coming. He say, no, don't, don't worry about that, son. Put your Put your shield up, right? I, I even see uh, unrest and division still in the church. We divided over how to respond to this and how to respond to that. He said, son, don't worry about that. Just put your shield up. I, I hear men and women gossiping against each other. I even hear the community saying that, that there's no fathers in the black community. I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, son, don't get distracted by that. Just... 
put your shield up. <laughs> Say, well, Lord, you know what? We got to worry about this thing because we don't know if we're going to keep income coming in the church. Said, we can keep, keep moving. I said, we got to do something. What are we going to do? He said, no, son. Have faith in God and just put your shield up <laughs> because my God shall supply <laughs> all of my need <laughs> according to his riches in glory. <laughs> if God said it, that settles it. I'm going to put my shield up and wait until my change come. I got to get out of here. I feel like preaching today, but I want somebody to know that when you put on the armor of God and an evil day comes, he says, stand and keep standing because after the battle is over, you'll look around and all of your naysayers, all of your haters will be running down the street because the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth will be able to keep you in the evil day. Say yeah. Somebody ought to say yeah. Listen, I got to go. Sit down, sit down, sit down. The helmet of salvation. I got to go. My time is almost up. It says take the helmet of salvation. So when Satan, when he comes at your head, he comes at your mind. He's trying to get you all distracted and all discombobulated. The other thing he does, he always comes at the head. Because he knows if you heal to kill the head, you can kill the body. So I tell you, please pray for your pastor. Please pray for your elders. But the devil wants to attack them. Amen. Pray for your husband. Pray for your sons. Pray for your brothers. Pray for them. Because the devil wants to attack them. And more so than anything, brothers and sisters, pray for your mind. Because the enemy wants to attack your mind. Because if he can get your mind and get you all crazy and all mixed up, you'll, you'll tear and defile your own friends. Because he'll have your mind messed up. Amen? Amen. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Yeah. Don't go to the left or to the right. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. And then lastly, and I got to go, he says, take up the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. <laughs> the word of God, the sword, is the offensive weapon that God gives us. Uh, but he's not talking about no long sword where you're talking about, ah, ah, tch, ah tch. no, not that kind of sword. He's really talking about a shorter sword. And this sword, you've got to have close contact, right? And this sword, you, you end your enemy. Amen. But here's the point. You don't really have to use this that much because it's two-edged and it's powerful. Amen. Now hear me, hear me. You got to go with me now. <laughs> the, the Bible says it's more powerful. It's like, it's like a two-edged sword. It's, it's, it's sharp on each side. It cuts both ways. Amen, right? <laughs> so you got to be careful with the word because not only will it cut them, it'll cut you. A amen, right? And so, and so what you need to really do is put up your shield of faith and let uh, Satan tear himself out. Right, 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 right. Right. Let him wear himself out. And then when he comes up on you to get you, slice him up with the word, right? And, it's, and so that's why the weapon don't need to be long because it ain't about all of this kind of fight. It's about this kind of fight. I, I don't need no weapon that I can hit you and then run. I, you, bring, come on. Bring your best shot. Come on. Just like I used to tell them guys, they're going to jump on me off the bus. We're going to get you off. We're going to get you off the bus. I'll be like, I ain't going nowhere. Come on. I, I get off on the bus from them and wait, wait down at the end of the bus. Come on. You going to run? No. Come on. Right? That, that's what I say to the devil. Oh, you better watch out, Pastor. You better watch out. Hey, you know, it was a pandemic. Come on. Because the word of God has me everything that I need. I can stand on the word of God. As a matter of fact, did you all know that the Bible says that everything else is going to pass away? <laughs> but the word of God is still going to stand? No, I didn't say everything. I said everything. Everything is going to pass away, including heaven and earth. But guess what's still going to be standing? The word of God. Man, shoot, what you talking about? I'm going to stand on the word of God. That means I don't never have to move, Deacon Hogan, because I'm standing on the word of God. Foundations may shift, earthquakes may have, lava may come up, hell may come, thunder and lightning may dance around. But guess what ain't going nowhere? The word of God. 
I'm going to stand on the word of God. Amen, somebody. Listen, the last thing he says, the last thing he says, the last thing he says, and this is, uh, I got to bring this up because my time is way up. He says, pray, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Paul says, you can't put on the armor without prayer. Amen. You can't walk in the armor Amen. without prayer. Amen. You can't exercise the effectiveness of the armor without prayer. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Amen. The Bible says man cannot live by food alone. Amen. Amen. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, you, my brothers and my sisters, must pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. Listen, I got to close. I got to go. I'm over my time, and I do apologize, but I just want you all to know today we are not fighting one another as much as we try to do because it seems so easy, as much as we try to hurt somebody else because it seems like they hurt us. We are not fighting against one another, brothers and sisters. That's not our war. Our mandate by God has been to love one another even as Christ has loved us. Well, you say, Pastor, I don't want to love them. They, I don't like how they act toward me. I don't want to love them. Well, you didn't act good toward God and he loved you. Well, Pastor, I don't, I don't know how to love them. I don't understand their language. I don't understand their culture. I don't understand their ways. Huh? Well, God don't understand your ways either. But he loves you. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor, maybe if they get right, then I can understand them and then I can love them better. God loved you when you was yet sinners. We must love one another, brothers and sisters. Stop trying to find something to be mad and hateful about toward other people and start finding some common ground that we can work on. Amen? Hear me when I say that. Start finding common ground with your brother or your sister. Find some common ground with people that don't look like you. Find some common ground with your neighbors that may not live next door to you. Find some common ground with the people on the other side of the church that you don't like. Find some common ground even in your household with your spouse and with your children. Why? Because the time is drawing nigh. Time is short. And our war is not with each other but it's with spiritual wickedness in high places. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the evils of the devil and after having done all to stand, stand therefore. God bless you. God love you. God keep you. If you're there, if you're there, if you're here, no matter where you are, if you really need the power of God in your life and you really don't know him like you need to know him, it's not a difficult, drawn-out process. You don't have to jump over no mountains or jump through no hoops. All you really got to do is hear his voice today. And if his voice spoke to you today, if he said to you, you know what, you need to listen, you need to hear this, all he wants you to do is respond to him. And that response is simple. All you got to do is say yes. He says, beloved brothers and sisters, he said, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at your door. I'm outside your door and I'm knocking. All I want you to do is come open the door. Let me come in and I'll eat with you and I'll love you. And I'll be your Lord. So today, pray this prayer with me. If he's knocking at your door, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my house is a mess. I really didn't want you to come in because it's a wreck. But you told me that you wanted to come in, and I hear you, and I want you to come in. So come in today. Fix me. Clean this house. Make it yours. I surrender to you in the name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you. We 
want to hear from you because we want to give you some resources and we want to encourage you. So call the church office here at Grace Bible Church here in Florence, Missouri. Call the office. I'll be here. The secretary will be here. We want to pray with you more. We want to give you some resources so that you can grow in grace. Amen. We love you and we're concerned about you. God bless you. God keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. All of the audience, won't you stand? We're going to be dismissed. I want to remind you all that if you would like to give, if you want to be a blessing to the church, if you want to give your tithe or your offering, you can do that online. Grace Bible Church on, online. We also have uh, easy tithe. Uh, and then in the back, we have a, um, a box back there that if you want to drop in your offering on your envelope, you can do that uh, on your way out. Uh, we are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, and we want you to be built up and established in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. May the Lord our God, our Father, bless us and be with us today as we leave this place but never to leave his presence. Give us traveling mercies as we go, and your name will be glorified to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God's people said amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. God bless you. May he keep you. Don't, don't loiter.